AI can solve maths problems now, which as a mathematics graduate, I find really cool, but does that mean that mathematicians are gonna get replaced by AI? Let's find out in today's video. So who and what are actually solving these mathematics problems? Google have recently released a new artificial intelligence system called Alpha Geometry. The clue is in the name, it does solve geometry problems. So mathematicians watching this, don't worry just yet, your jobs aren't getting replaced. Jokes aside, I think it's a really, really cool piece of artificial intelligence. It's actually the first artificial intelligence system to surpass the average mark scored at the Mathematical Olympiad. Now this channel is obviously a STEM channel focused mainly on mathematics, and you might be wondering, why do we care that there's an AI solving mathematics? Why is that such a huge deal? I mean, the obvious is it's quite cool being able to solve mathematics problems without using our brains, but personally that takes away the fun of mathematics for me. But aside from that, being able to solve math problems through AI will in turn generate more powerful and intelligent systems. Imagine an AI tool that can solve unsolved problems in mathematics and therefore physics and other areas as well. The breakthrough would be absolutely insane. Now, don't watch this video and think that we're already there and that's what this system is doing. It's not, unfortunately. It is a really cool piece of artificial intelligence, but unfortunately, we're not at the point where we can solve unsolved problems in mathematics, which is a shame. It would be quite a cool breakthrough though. Before we jump to any conclusions, let's have a look at what alpha geometry actually does. The research behind alpha geometry was actually done by scientists at Google DeepMind and Google Research. The paper that accompanies this new tool is titled Solving Olympiad Geometry Without Human Demonstrations. Quite a cool title and I've linked it below if you want to check it out. So what did this new AI tool actually do and how was it tested? So it was tested against problems that came up on the Mathematical Olympiad between 2000 and 2022. As a bit of a side note, if you want to have a look at what problems pop up in the Mathematical Olympiad, I have a few videos on my channel going through the maths behind some of those questions. So check them out if you're interested. Now, after the AI was trained, it was given 30 geometry problems from the Mathematical Olympiad. Now, I'm gonna pause for a moment. How many of those 30 problems do you think Alpha Geometry was able to solve correctly? It was actually 25, which I find quite insane, really. Now, the average IMO, International Mathematical Olympiad, student scored 15. It also surpassed the previous state-of-the-art solver, which solved 10 out of the 30 problems which again is insane. It's managed to solve 25 out of 30. I know those of you who are perhaps more of the glass half empty than the glass half full would say, well, it didn't solve all 30. Rightly so. And I'm sure we will be seeing further advancements on this tool to hopefully solve 30 out of 30. But either way, it's the first tool that did surpass what students were able to get, the average score of students. Unfortunately, it didn't beat the highest scoring Olympiad, which again, there's been some debate about this. Some people have said, why would you release this geometry tool if you can't be the best student? But I would argue that either way, it surpassed the previous state-of-the-art solver and it does do better than the average student. So I think it's a pretty crazy piece of tech and the maths behind it and how it works is really exciting. I'm gonna dive into that now. Alpha geometry is what is known as a neurosymbolic system. This means that it combines a classical neural language model like ChatGPT along with a symbolic deduction engine like Mathematica, so some form of mathematics software. The way that it works is kind of similar to how our brain works where we look at a problem and we say, hmm, let's first try this step and then we think about all the math that we know in relation to that step and then we'll do the maths and then think, okay, what next step shall I do now? Think of a step and then perform the maths. That's how this alpha geometry works. Essentially, the language model will come up with prompts. So it will say, okay, here's a geometry problem. How about we draw a line between these two points or, or we put the midpoint on this specific line, let's say. And then the symbolic deduction engine can be used to say, okay, well, if that's a midpoint, then here's all the relations that I know about this problem. And therefore, it's this iterative process of giving a prompt, figuring out what the maths is behind that prompt, and doing that over and over until you get to the solution. And it's quite similar to how our brains work, which 
is why I find this uh, alpha geometry tool so fascinating. Now, if you know anything about AI tools at all, you know that in order to train an AI tool or a piece of software, we need a lot of data. This, you could argue, was one of the shortcomings for this model, is that there's not a lot of resources out there to solve mathematics. Despite this, Google were able to generate 100 million synthetic problems and proofs, which in itself therefore allowed the model to do incredibly well and score 25 out of 30 in those problems. Now the sceptical people amongst us might be thinking, okay, well, do we just give alpha geometry a problem and then tell it to solve it and it just gives us the answer? It actually gives you a step-by-step -step proof of, of how you get to the answer, albeit sometimes a little bit longer, I say a little bit, sometimes incredibly longer than what the, the the solution is typically. Obviously you can imagine if there's this iterative process of, okay, what happens if you do this and then you'll get to this and then do this and then figure out the maths and you do it step by step, you can imagine there's probably quite a lot of steps because there's a lot of things that you can consider in geometry. And so some of the problems, although they're proved and you can see the step by step solution to them, they are, a bit longer than what it would take the average person to do. Despite that, it's still faster because it's done computationally rather than someone writing it down. You might be looking at alpha geometry and seeing it as a bit of a brute force method, which it essentially is. You know, like I said, it has this iterative process of proposing something and then seeing what math you can get from that proposal. So it is a brute force method and there are some people who have criticised it for that, but I, as a mathematician myself and someone who has spent a long time doing maths, that's kind of the beauty of maths. You get these problems and you look at them and you think, what, how do I even start with this? And a lot of the time it is brute force, it's just saying, okay, what can I deduce and what can I, you know, figure out from this problem and then what's the steps I'm going to take with that? So for me, although it is a kind of brute force way of doing it, it's similar to what we as humans do anyway. So for me, I find alpha geometry really, really cool. The only downside with it, obviously the clue is in the name, like I said, it solves geometry problems and geometry problems themselves are, I wouldn't say easy in mathematics, but they're very systematic. So you can figure out steps. You can, you can say, you know, put a midpoint and draw a line here and you can conclude things from that. If you were to branch out into other areas of mathematics, like continuum mechanics, algebraic, geometry, topology, a whole range of different areas, the approach might not be the same. A lot of the time as well, when you think about the potential to solve let's say, the Millennium Prize problems. I have a video going up very soon on my channel, so subscribe so you don't miss out on that, about the Millennial Prize problems. But, you know, we think about a problem like that. The limitations with alpha geometry is it's using a symbolic deduction engine which already knows the maths behind it. It can't come up with new maths. So it is cool in that sense, but it's essentially doing what we as humans can already do. So alpha geometry is limited by the symbolic deduction engine and what we know as humans, but hopefully with methods like this and, and solvers like this, we can then increase the mathematics AI tools that will be present in the future. And I'm so excited to see you know, what we can achieve, what we can do. It would be incredible if we were able to solve unsolved problems in mathematics using AI. We're not there yet, unfortunately, but I hope, I really hope that we can make some steps in the right direction and maybe solve some unsolved problems in mathematics. I know with that, there's probably people again who are skeptical because if we had an AI tool that was able to solve unsolved problems in mathematics and it was able to do it rapidly, then our whole world would change. What we know about, you know, the laws of physics, the laws of mathematics, everything in our world will change. And then you kind of get into the philosophical point of, of AI and stuff, which I, I won't dive into for this video. But all in all, I think alpha geometry is a really, really cool piece of tech. And I have really enjoyed doing some research on it to show you how it works. And yeah, I hope this is the start of more cool mathematics tools in the future. Thank you for watching and I'll see you all in the next one.